Dear students and respected teachers, Namaste. Welcome to today's English class. As you know that today is the continuation of last time's session. Uh, I already informed you in the last uh, session that we will divide this uh, lesson, Unit 10, Lesson 1, Yogmaya, Poet Teacher Insurgent, into three different sessions. We had started with pre-teach vocabulary session in the beginning and today we are interpreting this lesson. And I, to I, I told you that all the word meanings will be um, useful in interpretation of the lesson as well as next session when we do exercises at that time also those word meanings are important. We had uh, nearly 20 words and its meaning we discussed in the last session. So, uh, let's start today's session. Today's session is, as I have already informed, lesson interpretation. So, we have these sayings in your book as well. You can see there. Two sayings are there and we will discuss questions of this, these two uh, sayings. The first one is, if history were taught in the form of stories, it would never be forgotten. Rodyard Kipling. What does it mean? History. Do you like the subject history? Mm, most, of, most of the students say, they reply that they don't like history. History is a boring subject because they have to memorize, they have to remember uh, particular dates and then particular name of the people. So they regard history as a boring subject. But this saying says that if it is taught in the form of stories, because stories are liked by uh, most people, that's why if history is taught in the form of stories, then it would never be forgotten. We should not forget our history. Our present is what? because of our past. Our past means history. So we have to remember that. So this saying says so. Let's move to next one. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that ma matter. Martin Luther King. Did you get something about this saying? What does it mean? Our lives begin to end. So we end our life if we do not speak about the things that matter. I mean, if we don't speak about the things that you know, such uh, the top uh, the things such as discriminations, um, discriminations in the uh, society, and then so, some other dead habits that have been uh, practiced in the society. If we do not talk about that, if we do not remove that, if we do not go against that then our lives will be ruined and that, that is just like the end of our life. So we should speak about it. That is the meaning of this saying. And so uh, first question says, what do this saying means? We have already discussed this, right? So we know the meaning of these sayings now. Look at the title given. Can you guess what the text is about? Title. So what is the title? Title of the lesson is Yogmaya, Poet, Teacher, Insurgent. So we are probably going to read about a person named Yogmaya, who is a poet, writes poem, right? And uh, she must be a teacher. She teaches, so she must uh, teach, teach something, uh, the lessons. She might not be the formal teacher of school, but she might have taught some lessons. So we are going to uh, le learn about what she has taught. And she is also insurgent. I hope you remember the meaning of the word insurgent that we learned last in last class. Insurgent means freedom fighter. So she must have fought for the freedom. So we are going to read about such a person. So I'm going to uh, show you a picture of a lady. So you have a guess now? Who is she? Of course, 
she is yogmaya yogmaya neupani her full name is yogmaya neupani and you can see how she has dressed up see her dress and the way she has worn holy trade and uh, so lines she has drawn on her arms and forehead what does this signify who is she she looks like a religious follower isn't it she looks like a monk or um, ascetic who has uh, given up everything from the life and uh, now she wanted to live some uh, life, a kind of solitude, life in loneliness. So let's see what is about her life. And before starting the lesson uh, from your book, I would like to give some backgrounds of Yogmaya, uh, a kind of uh, biography of Yogmaya, because <clears throat> without getting uh, about her life and her biography, uh, it's very difficult to understand your lesson because your lesson is just uh, uh, it is an extract from the article of Barbara Nimbris. So this is just a portion. So it is not possible to understand without knowing about Yogmaya's biography. That's why I brought some background information of her and points. Let's go through that first, and that will surely makes you understand the lesson well okay so here's the starting yogmaya was born into a brahmin family in majwa besi nepali dada vdc in 1860 so she was born in 1860 so a long time ago and in a brahmin family when whenever the word brahmin comes in our head what comes so they are a little bit ritualistic, religious, right? Perform many pujas. So she was born in such kind of family. Since she was born a long time ago, you know, it was the time was maybe many people were not literate. People believe in discriminations. Women were not free. Even uh, have you heard about Sati Pratha? Sati Pratha was also there existed at that time. So she was born at that time. And uh, so Majwa based in Nepal, this is the eastern part of Nepal. She was born in the eastern part of Nepal. So as uh, at that time, Yogmaya was married off by her parents to a boy. Notice this boy. Named, not a man, boy. Named Manorath Koirala when she was just seven years old as per the custom. So See what type of custom was there at that time. She was just seven and got married. Later she became a widow within three years of her marriage. See the tragedy. What was the tragedy? She became a widow. Her husband died. When after three years, mean when she was just ten. Yogmaya faced discrimination because of her widow status. As widow. Uh, widows were, uh, were still now also, they are not respected, um, they are not given much respect. They, have, they, they are considered as having a low status, which is, which is not true. And at that time, so the condition was even worse. Widowed status was even poor. So she, she faced lots of, lots of difficulties in her life. Then Yogmaya decided to flee from her home at Bhospur and she later married her lover at Assam. So, uh, so after her husband um, passed away, she started to, uh, which was not allowed though, it is, was, that's why secretly she started to uh, develop a relationship with a neighborhood boy, neighborhood man. Uh, and uh, he, then they ran, flee ran away and they, uh, to Assam and then there they got married. After over a decade of marriage, her second husband died and she became a widow again. So after 10 decade, 10 years, um, again her husband died, second husband died and then she became a widow again. Later, Yogmaya married a man in Assam with the name, with surname Dotel 
who also died after a few years. See the tragedy? She got married for the third time and uh, her husband died after a few years again. So, she was tired of life and she did not uh, like to leave. Um, uh, she did not like to live life um, like a normal life and she so she returned to Nepal with her daughter Nain Kala to her home village at Majwabesi and handed over daughter to daughter Nain Kala to her brother her brother mean Yogmaya's brother Yogmaya she uh, handed over daughter and then she started to leave she, she uh, left all the worldly pleasure and then she gave up all the responsibilities and fully assumed the life of an ascetic. Ascetic means like monk type life. Um, monk type life, she left everything, uh, worldly pleasure, and she started to live monk type life, hermits or monks. Then, uh, not, uh, she started to live such life, but she was continuously working for the society. She wanted to work for the society. So she became a religious leader. Yogmaya was a religious leader and women's life, uh, rights activist. She fought for the women's rights. As she was not given, a pro given proper rights in her life, she fought for that. And she became a poet as well. She started to uh, write powerful lines, powerful verses. We will read some lines, some uh, powerful lines in uh, our lesson too. And all those uh, lines were compiled and published. It was published and the name was Sasortha Yogbani. This work was considered to be her most notable contribution of her life. So Yogmaya's poems, Yogmaya's poems are set around the time when Nepal was ruled by the Rana regime and when India was ruled under the British Raj. So you can understand Rana regime, how cruel it was, uh, how Mm, brutal it was uh, and British British colony so how they were we know we know that we have read and heard watched movies about it so how a discriminatory society was there so at that time she was born in that kind of um, society she was born her style characterized by the cultural and political oppression of the time so her style was against cultural and political oppression of that time and uh, was distinctly original and courageously outspoken. She was so courageous. She spoke courageously about against this uh, uh, oppression, um, suppression of that time. Her poems and activism uh, themes heavily revolved on female and minority rights in the region which uh, appeal to a lot of people around the time. So she mainly spoke about female rights and then minority group, those who, ha who uh, were getting uh, less rights, let's say low status, having low status life. So she spoke for them. She felt that patriarchal society, you know, patriarchal society, Pitri Satatmak Samas, uh, those who in um, only the male are given uh, emphasis, focus, they are given prioritize and female are dominated, such kind of society. Around the time was uh, unfairly discriminated, discriminated uh, nature towards women, lower caste groups and in case of Nepal. So that time this condition was there, discriminatory towards women and lower caste people. So one of her disciples, so she started to develop many disciples, followers, her followers um, there. And then one of her followers, Chandra Bahadur Basnet, later constructed a hut for Yogmaya. And also compiled her poems and later published them from Sikkim. So her poems were published. It was possi possible because of her follower. Ultimately, her activism and popularity gained the attention of the administrator of brutal Rana regime as well. So Rana uh, started to keep an eye on uh, her activities. Yogmaya believed that the administration had become extremely corrupt. So she was against corruption, Prastachar, right? Corruption. She believed that the administration has become corrupt and had 
added to the uh, misery of the common people. So it was the cause of misery, sorrow, dukkha uh, ko karan. For the common people, it was the corruption of the administration. Next point, Yogmaya sent one of her disciples, uh, Prem Narayan Pandari, to Kathmandu in 1931, who later began to be known popularly by the masses in the Kathmandu as Hariram Prabhu. So she sent a disciple to follow her to the Kathmandu to talk about those discrimination, to uh, remove those discriminations. However, however, the administration did not reform, did not bring any change, any of their brutal and corrupt techniques in the next four years. No changes was brought. Brutal, very cruel uh, and corrupt technique was there. She also openly criticized the bureaucrats who were uh, thriving from bribery and denying people even the basic rights through her, her poems. So through her poems, she depicted, she showed that how were the bureaucrats at that time? Bureaucrats, you know, bureaucracy, bureaucrats, karmachari tantra, so administrations, how were they? they? She criticized that. They all are based on what? Bribery, khuskhori, you know. So uh, her poem showed that with a view to promote and preach her ideas as well, convince the administrator in Kathmandu to change their discriminatory and corrupt policies. So she tried to change discriminatory policies, corrupt policies through her poems. In her later years, her activities were heavily monitored by the government and her works were banned by the authorities. So it was her works were against the uh, government of that time, administration of that time. That's why they banned that, not allowed to uh, read by the other people. So they banned and under the command of the Rana rulers. So it was anti-Rana activities, a sort of good works at that time were anti-Rana activities. So the uh, Rana rulers, they banned the work. It is also regarded that Yogmaya founded the first organization of Nepali women, the uh, Nari Samiti for the women's rights in 1918. So uh, one of another, her good work was that she founded the organization Nepal for Nepali women's and the na uh, she named that Nari Samiti, which was considered to be the main lobby, main region uh, behind, the main step, first step behind the abolition of Sati Pratha in Nepal in 1920, as I told you that there was Sati Pratha, when husband dies, wife also, wife is also burned alive. Such kind of Pratha was, such kind of uh, ritual was there and which was um, eradicated, er, uh, abolished in 1920 and she was also one of the main cause, main uh, initiator to remove, eradicate that, uh, that kind of custom from Nepal. Later, the leader herself uh, came to Kathmandu. Here, leader means Yogmaya. Yogmaya came to Kathmandu with her daughter. She was welcomed by Juddha Samshya, uh, the, uh, Juddha Samshya, Juddha Samshya uh, the place our nation was uh, being, um, at that time, the administrator was Juddha Samse, Prime Minister was Juddha Samse, being ruled by him. And uh, she, he gave, Prime Minister gave uh, her his assurance. Bisustha, Garai Kothiyo, Teti Bela, Bhedda Kheri, but did not implement any, uh, any concrete reform. She went to talk with Prime Minister, Prime Minister assured her, but did not brought any, did not bring any changes. With the authorities increasingly harsh towards Yogmaya and her group of supporters as well as unwilling to reform their brutal and corrupt approach to the governance. So they were not willing, the government was not willing to change their corrupt policies. Yogmaya and her 68 disciples, so he, as a consequence, what happened, you know, you might have never have heard about this. Yogmaya and her 68 disciples cons uh, consciously committed the biggest mass suicide. So they committed mass suicide, Yogmaya and her followers. 
68 disciples at a time. So it is called Jal Samadhi in Nepali. They uh, killed themselves, suicide, uh, in a Nepali history by jumping into the Arun River. Arun River, they jumped into the Arun River. The religious ritual for the Jal Samadhi began at the night of 4th July. 1941 and in the morning of 5th July they started preparation in the 4th July and then in the 5th July then around 4 a.m. a.m. Yogmaya laid the ritualistic mass suicide by climbing on a rock placing a plate with a fire lit oil lamps fire lit oil lamps I mean uh, such kind of deals they kept on their uh, her head and at the banks of the raging Arun River, they walked uh, around the banks of Riven, uh, Arun River, thundering uh, a very wide and um, wide river. They then they jumped into the river and then they killed themselves. So, uh, re considering all those her contribution, uh, just before two years, just before some years, just in 2016. Nepal government issued a postage stamped stamp recognizing her contribution. Here's a picture. This is not the real real one. This is a uh, mural art. This is called mural art dedicated to Yogmaya. It is in Lalitpur, Nepal, by American artist. So uh, it shows that how they jumped into the river and killed themselves. You can see this picture with lamp and they jumped into the river. <clears throat> so, uh, this is the background of Yogmaya and now we are starting the lesson. You can, if it is not clear, you can look at your book as well in page number 107. Yogmaya, poet, teacher, insurgent, as I have already told you, Yogmaya is, was a poet, teacher and insurgent, all three. So uh, let's start. Uh, Yogmaya had a two-pronged agenda, sharp agenda, two sharp agendas, two sharp objectives he had. Not just one, not only one. She had two agenda, two objective. Explain Manmaya. Manmaya is a follower of Yogmaya, and she is explaining of her um, about Yogmaya. Her first target was, okay, among two target, her first target was the cultural and religious oppression of the time. She was against the cultural and religious oppression. What does oppression mean? Cruel and unfair treatment, right? So she was against that. Her second object was the ruler, or ruler, prime minister, who along with his generals allowed corruption and inequality to prevail. So she was against the prime minister, against the government of that, ta that time, who supported for corruption, who allowed the corruption, um, who scoring illegal activities. Uh, so that kind of activities were existed at that time, and she wanted to remove, eradicate those things, remove the, these thing, those things from the society. So how society could be equal, uh, so society there could be equality in the society. Our master, Sakti Yogmaya, so she, Manmaya called uh, Yogmaya a master. Master uh, Sakti Yogmaya showed us how these two evils are intertwined and she feared neither. These two, two her objectives, uh, they were interconnected, intertwined each other. And Yogmaya was not uh, fearful about that. She was very strong and uh, courageous too fight against those things. So you can see the words are here and meanings I have given here uh, below, below the parag below paragraph, as we have uh, already learned these meanings in previous class as well. Okay. Yogmaya launched a brilliant and a daring political campaign from her best in the hills of East Nepal. As I already told you that, Yogmaya belongs to the eastern part of Nepal. From there, she started her campaign, political campaign, uh, campaign to fight against those uh, inequality. 
So it took place during uh, the 1930s and ended in 1940. So whole a decade, a decade they, uh, she fought for that with her death. So it ended only after her death. Along with 68 of her followers who one by one followed her into the thundering current of the Arun River. All 68 uh, followers also uh, sacrificed themselves into the Arun River. After leading campaign for reform and justice, Yogmaya finally confronted the ruler with an ultimatum. She gave the final warning, ultimatum. To whom? To the administrator, to, to Judda Samshir, Prime Minister, that common people should be provided justice. And there should be changes in the society, good changes in the society. What she says, if you do not grant us justice, we will die. She said so and did so. She declared, she declared and she showed that to the uh, administrator. Judda Samche responded by sending his army to round up the protesters. So instead of listening to her, Judda Samche, what he, he did, he sent, to, uh, sent uh, army to uh, control the protester, control, to, control the, uh, the demonstrators, Yogmaya and her followers to control that. She, he did not listen, he did not take her movements positively, it means. The tragedy that resulted remains a stain on, uh, on the government, stain, dabba, dag, dag kurubman hai, as all of them sacrificed themselves, that was, that could not be cleared out. The Nepalese authorities covered off the episode and banned all the mention of her. And Nepalese authorities, they tried to hide that truth. To dag lai hatao na khojiye ko, sabbai usko kura aruchi ke gariyo. Cover uh, but her campaign was thoroughly expunged from the nation's historical record and almost lost its political consciousness. Uh, and then what happened? Expunged. Her campaign was expunged, erased. Historical records and everything. Uh, but the powerful verses composed, composed by Yogmaya, the Hajurbani survived, and there lies the story. But only uh, we know about Yogmaya because of her powerful verses. She was a poet and she wrote poems. Her poems were so powerful that it is still uh, there and it, is t it tells the story. Uh, uh, the, these lines were called Hajurbani. The lines um, uh, are like this. One, one example is here. I am the child of child in your lap. I'm like a child, innocent, in your lap. You are the babe in mine. And you are also child like a child to me. She is telling those things to her followers. She is a, like a child and the, for the followers, and followers are like children a child for her. There's nothing between us, nothing at all. And there's nothing. Your eyes have tears just like my own. So uh, you also have tears, I also have tears, all our problems, our miseries are same. That's why I have sympathy to you and you should have sympathy to me, on me. So such kind of lying she is simple but uh, gives uh, meaning, with meaning. Okay. <clears throat> on the surface, these lines may appear to be politically innocent. Uh, innocent, they are not. So they seems innocent, but they are. They gives the meaning. They have the meaning. They Im uh, they embody the very principle of equality. Those lines con consist embody, represent the uh, principle of, of equality. They call for parity and mature respect. So she always call for the parity, uh, the state of being equal. So she always fought for the equality and mutual respect, respect to each other. They are the tender minders of the sensitivity of all the common needs, joys and sufferings. So uh, if those equality is there in a society, they will bring the joy and they will, sufferings will be avoided. 
Manumaya uttered another of uh, Yogmaya's verses filled with the praise of nature and also love of land and homeland. So she, uh, it expressed another lines, another verse that expressed the love for the homeland nation. Supreme among peaks, this our Himalay. So she sees this describe about Himalay, our Himalays. Supreme, she calls Himalay supreme, summit peaks. From where water flows, Arun merges with the with Barun. So she calls Himalayas are the sources of water, sources of river. Arun merges with Barun, flows on to mingle. Mingle mean to combine, mix with Irkwa. So this uh, Arun, Barun, Irkwa, they are the names of river that started from Himalay and they mix with each other. These lines hint her political goal to move towards equality. Her effort to challenge the system is opposed by priest, the public, the government, but still Yogmaya attacks. There were some groups which were, which opposed her, the, who, uh, the groups did not like her activities. Uh, some priests were there, public were there, government were there, they did not like her movements. Some supporters were there, some were against her. Another powerful line, were virtue stained by greed. If good virtue, good qualities are stained by greed, if there is greed, uh, even good qualities will be ruined. It, ha it will have no value at all. Justice undone by bribes. If the, if there is uh, if justice cannot be done by if the, the justice cannot be done if there the, there is bribe bribes if people are bribed, though innocent we lost. No matter how innocent we are, we will be lost. Thus we are twice punished, and we will the only innocent people will be punished if there are greed and bribes in the society. Eventually, Yogmaya's teachings became a comprehensive utopian ideal. ideal. So, Yogmaya's teachings, all those things became the utopian ideal. Utopia, utopian, you know that, right? Utopia is a paradise, heaven, so, uh, where everything is pleasant, uh, everyone, uh, they, everybody are um, regarded as equal, where there is equality, ideal place. So her, her teachings became comprehensive utopian ideal, linked with a non-violent political strategy. Her, uh, it, it, her activities are related with a non-violent political strategy. She devised to bring it about. It began four decades before the United Nations sponsored an international convention on women. women. So four decades before, see how long before uh, she started uh, such campaign, even before United Nations International, uh, United Nations sponsored international convention for the women. It was before that, and even before the current generation of American feminists was born. Even American feminists were not born. And even before Mahatma Gandhi's non-violent quit India movement, how famous Mahatma Gandhi's non-violent quit India movement is famous. But before that, the uh, Yogmaya's campaign was there. Um, Gandhi's uh, quit India movement, it was the uh, campaign to get rid of British occupation. So, <clears throat> it was underway at that time. But Yogmaya's movement went further because it included a call to end just injustice against women and girls. So she was against injustice against women and girls. So uh, I hope you got this lesson well. And uh, you can see uh, if you are confused about the meanings, this uh, you can highlight uh, the word, meaning of the highlighted words. Meanings are given below as I already informed you. So. Uh, I hope you got uh, about this lesson and enjoyed what uh, learning about Yogmaya and her life um, and you got about this lesson. So this lesson 
uh, interpretation uh, will help you to do further comprehensive exercises. So go through it again once again. And what you can do is uh, you can write a short biography of Yogamaya as a homework. And uh, dear teachers, please help uh, them with this lesson and to write biography, uh, providing some more information. And um, otherwise, today's information is sufficient to write a biography about her. Uh, thank you for listening to me. That's all for today. Namaste.